we were on vacation in Cape Town for our anniversary trip, and we walked past the bathhouse, and he had never been in one, so I offered to show him. And we went inside, and I surprised him by saying, do you want to try something with a third person? Hi, this is Mike Balaban. Welcome to another episode of Bammer Tales. Today, I'd like to talk to you about relationships, in particular, my longest one, which lasted 12 years as committed partners and 18 years as effectively roommates and partners without sex. I had friends who wondered if I was getting as much out of it as they thought I should. They felt like we were so different and I changed to fit in the relationship. And all I could say to them was, you know, the only two people that know what's going on in a relationship and how it's doing are the two people inside of it. And that's the way it should be. The way we met was we were both on vacation in Fort Lauderdale at Christmas, New Year's time in 2000, 2001, New Year's Eve. He was traveling with two couples from his hometown of Detroit, and then I was with three single guys from my home in New York City. We happened to stay at the same gay resort, the Grand Resort in Fort Lauderdale. The weather was crappy. We were basically indoors or in the jacuzzi all week because the, the beach was just not visitable. But it was a great time. I just wanted to relax anyway, and then I ended up meeting Jeff. Now, how did that happen? They arrived. He was a big hunk. Everybody thought he was attractive. I didn't think I had a chance. Thank God I found out later that he's, he's kind of sapiosexual. He's attracted to really bright guys, and I happen to be bright. I'm attracted to big muscle guys, and he's a big muscle guy, although he was even bigger than I generally tended to like. He was like six foot, 205, 210 pounds of, of muscle. We were both there. We ended up not really getting a chance to speak much because he's an introvert, kind of a wallflower in a group. And we were always six or eight of us in the jacuzzi, and he was not seated next to me. But finally, on New Year's Eve day, I got the chance to chat with him, figured out we might see each other later that evening at New Year's Eve at the, the Eagle Bar, which, in fact, we did. And once we were there, it quickly became apparent that he was as attractive in me to me as I was to him. And we went back to the jacuzzi at 2.30 in the morning after the last call at the bar and had our arms around each other the whole time and finally ended up back in a bedroom that was provided to us because neither one of us was having our own room on the trip. But our friends rearranged their sleeping arrangements so he and I could have sex together and spend the night, the last night together. I say the last night because the next day I was flying home to New York. I couldn't get him out of my mind. I started texting. He texted back. He said, I'd really rather phone. Okay, let's phone. We did back and forth. And within several months, we were traveling to visit each other for a week or two at a time in Detroit and New York. Now, he had never lived away from Detroit more than two weeks in his entire 40 years. He was a very kind of small town boy from the big town of Detroit. And he came from a middle class, lower middle class family. Uh, he left home at 18 and moved out on his own because he knew he had to in order to come out. He went to work for a business without a degree and made his way up to office manager in the engineering company and eventually put himself through college and then business school at nights. So a self-made man man who would later end up running the operations department of the National Bank of Detroit with 150 people reporting to him. And then they wanted him to move to Columbus, Ohio, and he didn't want to. So he took a severance package and took time off. And that's when we met in Fort Lauderdale. So when he started coming to visit me, he quickly said, I'd be willing to move to New York. And if I can get a job here, I'm too conservative to move without one and, and come and live with you. Well, number one, that was exciting, but scary. I hadn't had someone lived with me full time since I was in grad school. I had had uh, boyfriends, but we never lived together. And, and yet, if he was going to make the move all the way to New York, when he'd never left Detroit, the least I could do was welcome him into my home. It took him about 14 months to find the job, but it, because the dot-com crash was putting a hiring freeze on companies, adding new employees. But eventually, he moved to New York in February of 2002, and we would be partners for another 10 years living together until we ended up separating, as I'll describe. During the time we were together, we were very different. 
uh, I'm an outgoing person. He's an introvert. I'm a night owl. He's a morning person. I'm very irregular and flexible about when I eat, when I go to sleep. He's on a clock on everything. And that led to some bumpy times when we were disagreeing and having to negotiate and compromise. And eventually, eventually, those were probably the reasons why we broke up, because we were just so different from the beginning, and we got kind of, kind of tired of that compromise. But we loved each other. We lived together. We were exclusively having sex for about four or five years. And then his sexual appetites changed. I, I won't be specific here. Just, let's just say that I no longer felt ideally suited to be able to provide him everything he needed sexually. And I wanted him to be happy. And yet, I had never been in an open relationship, and when he first broached it, I was against it. A year later, we were on vacation in Cape Town for our anniversary trip, and we walked past a bathhouse, and he had never been in one, so I offered to show him. And we went inside, and I surprised him by saying, do you want to try something with a third person? He was like, really? Are you serious? I, I don't want to push you. I said, no. We're far away from home. If it doesn't work, no, no loss. Nobody needs to know. We won't do it again. It didn't end up being all that f much fun for him. A year later, we tried it again in a bathhouse in Rio de Janeiro on our next anniversary trip. Again, it wasn't fun for him. But still, I ultimately realized there was something missing for him in terms of his sexual diet. And I loved him and I wanted him to be happy. So we reached the point where I proposed that we each allow the other two or three or four times a year at most, the freedom, the flexibility. If you're out and you're with people and you meet someone and you're attracted to them and vice versa, contact me and let me know what you're doing and you have the freedom to go off for an hour or two. And that was it. I knew him well enough to know he had all the emotions he could handle with me. Of the two of us, if any one of us was ever likely to emotionally become attracted to somebody else, that was me. But I'm a loyalist. I would never have done that. In fact, the few times I did have sex, I made a rule that I would only do it once with a person, so I would never even be tempted to compare. So as this went on satisfactorily, we were both very happy for another five or six years. And then it just started to reach the point where things got bumpy and our differences became more pronounced. And frankly, we became a little exhausted with the whole compromise thing. And so ultimately, Jeff raised the idea of us separating. And I wasn't thrilled. And I said that. I said, I still think we can make it. But if, you, if you're not convinced, I'm not going to try to persuade you. I don't want to be with someone who's not fully enthusiastically wanting to be with me. And that's what led us to decide to separate. The good news is of a sort. We had bought the apartment next to mine, moved out for six months, combined them, and moved back into an enlarged three-bedroom, three-bath apartment. And so Jeff was able to move out to the master of the master bedroom that I kept into the, the, the guest suite at the far end of the apartment. And we continued that way for another six years or so adequately. There were no real problems. The first year was a little bumpy because I was the one who'd been broken up with and I had to kind of get used to that separation. But eventually neither one of us was jealous. We allowed the other person to bring a date home or to date somebody. He had a long distance relationship for a while. I never really found anybody else. Uh, frankly, living with him and going on vacation with him and going to the movies and having dinner, everything, frankly, but sex really was like being in a relationship that has lived past its date where the partners have sex. And so it was only when COVID hit and he lost his job and was going to move to Palm Springs that we decided to sell our apartment. And I was going to stay in New York, but I couldn't even look at apartments because everything was shut down. I moved to San Diego where I am now. He and I are two and a half hours apart. We still speak every week, sometimes more often. I visited him as recently as a month ago in Palm Springs. We're very, very close. I'm that way with all my exes. This is what a relationship should be like to me. I don't care what anybody on the outside thinks of it. It really comes down to what the two people inside think. That's my advice, that, and make sure when you pick a potential partner, Make sure he's an honest man the way Jeff was with me. Thank you very much. This is Mike Balaban. I hope this has been useful. Thanks for attending another Bammer Tales. Bye.